live. It's time for a live. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Recordology. Welcome back to Recordology Live. It's been a while since we've done one of these. If you are watching me right now, listening, if you're hearing these words come out of my mouth, you're not on the live. You're actually watching the replay because nobody joins that fast. So I always want to start off by saying, uh, sorry I missed you on the actual live. If you want to be a part of the next one, you don't want to miss, subscribe, hit the bell notification, select all. Make sure you've got notifications enabled on your device. And uh, yeah, glad to have you guys here. People are now popping in. Glad to see you. UTP216, he's here. She's here. They are here. And welcome in. Five individuals already. So glad to have you. Somebody already jumped off. They're like, screw this. <laughs> got better things to do before I start my uh, last evening of freedom before work. Assuming you work Monday through Friday, as do I. If you're wondering why I've got these glitters up here, there's an interesting story behind that. So stay tuned. Wow, that's unfortunately coming across on camera way more than I hoped. Happy Sunday indeed. Happy Sunday to one and all. Welcome in. So glad to have everybody here. We're going to do some vinyl review. I'm going to address the glitter on my face. <laughs> I really tried to wipe that off. I didn't know that would be happening. That was unplanned. That is unplanned. What is planned is a nice sparkling beverage. We have a small cup, a small can, Canada Dry. We have some ice water here so I don't uh, blow your eardrums out with a cough attack. We will, I'm going to try and listen. We're going to actually play some vinyl. Uh, you can see it right here in the corner of the RT85. We're letting the uh, Technics up there rest. It's got a busy week ahead of it, uh, keeping me entertained as I work throughout the week. Just give a couple minutes here for folks to jump in. I want to say a huge thank you to everybody for joining tonight. Give me a shout out, hit a thumbs up, and uh, we'll, we'll answer any questions you guys have. Talk about whatever you want to talk about. Um, it's interesting the way we're doing the show going forward. There's been a lot of changes. If you're new to Recordology, you have joined us in a, in a point of change. King of the Dots, I, I live for vinyl, I think is what you said. And that's a good thing to live for. It's fun. It's really fun, isn't it? We're, that's what brings us to Gebo today. So uh, glad to have you all here. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, change. So Recordology is constantly making pivots. And the reason why is because we want to adapt to what you guys want. So if we're doing something and it's not making any progress or nobody's caring or nobody's interested or nobody's engaging. We want to stop wasting our time on those things and instead spend our time and money on the things that matter most to you guys. So we're always trying to make the show better for you. So hopefully that comes across and you guys are like, wow, this show is getting better all the time. So we have made some changes. I'll talk about that in a little while. Mostly I just want to interact with you guys because the show itself is less personal, especially now. I'm making a concerted effort to make it just more about the tech, more about the review, less about the wordy introductions and you know updates on my life and the weather in Denver, et cetera, et cetera. But we have these lives for that. So that's what we, we're able to do here in the live, in addition to the other stuff as well. Kind of a mixed bag here, more personal, less formal. Glad to have you guys here. UTP 216, my local record store just posted a new in wrap Metallica Ride the Lightning. First pressing. Wow, that's cool. Now you say posted. Can you like search it on their website? That's something I feel like vinyl shops need to do more of. I would love, I mean, part of the fun though is crate digging. I'm, I'm deconstructing my own you know thought here. But on the other hand, it would be nice to say, hey, do they have a copy of Ride the Lightning? I can go on their website and search for it. That's awesome. So yeah, give me a shout out for um oh gotcha awesome hey robert welcome in yeah give me a shout out if you wouldn't mind um if you're a lurker in the background you don't want to talk that's okay but i always love a shout out or not at, well i like a shout out but i always like a hey a hello um i just love to hear from you guys i want to interact with you i want this to be interactive but if you just want to i do this too i go into people's lives and i'm like there's no way i'm saying anything um, I just don't want to. I just want, I, for some reason, I like watching YouTube lives while I eat. <laughs> There's probably some destructive correlation there, but for some reason, like, I, I love that. Just like sit that there and uh, uh, we watch some uh, YouTube lives. <laughs> it's strange. 
Uh, Tony, welcome in. Mr. Cordology, greetings from Seattle. Tony, again, thanks for that amazing package. Uh, Tony recently sent an amazing, amazing package. Still going through all that stuff. I just, in fact, I may have one or two of the records you sent me in the stack we're going to look at in a minute. Trevor's flat, round, and spun vinyl community. I like that. That's cool. Welcome in. Howdy to yourself as well. David says, hey, watching from Northern Ireland. That's cool, David. Welcome in. That is so cool. I haven't heard from you for a while, says Robert. So yeah, and we were just talking about that. We've changed things up a bit. We've changed up the cadence of the shows. And we're always changing and trying to come up with the best mix. Um, so I don't do this full time yet. I would like to get to that point. So I have to mix this with my non-YouTube life. So that means that I can't spend every waking hour of every day doing YouTube full time. Like a lot of YouTubers are able to, we're not quite there yet. We're, we're getting there, but we're not quite there yet. Until that happens, there has to be this work-life YouTube balance. And I, uh, at one point I was doing daily shows. That was way too much. We did that for nine months. I still look back at that. I'm like, how in the heck could I do a daily show? And it was you know, just a regular content. They weren't filler shows. Somehow we did a daily show. Um, then we did three. And then we did two plus the uh, membership. And um, then we went down to uh, where we're at now, which is I still haven't decided. I don't know uh, what you guys want in terms of content. Do you want a weekly show like everybody else does? One weekly show? Do you want two shows a week? I'm not sure. I'm not sure how many shows you guys would want. Because, you know, there's something to be said for. Hey, Google, stop. That was weird. Google just started playing music randomly. I mean, I know it's always listening. But that was kind of weird. <laughs> it's kind of weird. All of a sudden, and I know what that song that was too. I haven't listened to it lately. Oh, that's very strange. I definitely did not say the trigger word to initiate the Google response. Didn't see the lights light up. It just started. It's done that to me before. Sometimes during Zoom calls at work, all of a sudden, <laughs> it's, it's always something really obnoxious too. Uh, but anyway, back to what I was saying. So yeah, we're not sure what we're going to do on the show. I want to know what you guys want. I want to know what you guys want. I thought that everybody would would get a kick out of a membership program, uh, you know, a very affordable membership program. It's like four bucks a month. I get it. Sometimes a $1 more a month is too much. So I figured there'd be a percentage, but it was a low percentage. It was a very low percentage. We had, I don't want to say the exact number, but uh, there weren't enough digits in that number to make it worthwhile because it still took just as much time to make a Vinyl Nation show. It still took just as much money, effort, et cetera, et cetera. You know, you're looking at a day of filming, a day of editing, uh, the cost of the equipment, if there is any in that particular show. Um, you're restricted from sponsored videos because you can't, you know, if you're, if you've got, if I've got a sponsored content, if I've got sponsored content, I couldn't do it in a show that was going to get minimal views. Yet at the same time, I had to make it original enough that, people would want to invest in those extra shows. And in short, they didn't. So uh, we had, you know, some dedicated core folks and it stuck with us pretty much through the whole thing. A few folks joined right at the end there, but at the end of the day, it wasn't the level of success that it needed to be. And I was a little surprised. I was like, really? Okay. But again, if you guys don't want it, that's okay. Uh, merchandise. There's no more merchandise. Nobody's noticed because nobody was caring in the first place. Uh, that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Like just, and maybe there will be in the future. Who knows? It's not to say this is the way it is, but people don't want personal interactions for the most part. The relatively small amount of people that will join this live or watch this live are the people that are thinking of this as more than just point the camera at the tech and show me what's inside kind of people. You guys are the people that care if, if, if more so than just point at the tech and shut up and talk less and, you know, show me stuff. There's so many people out there that just like that, and that's fine. And that's kind of what the primary, the main show is being tailored to. But I still want these interactions for our core people here, our core family, to really be able to, you know, just hang out like we all are here. And that's why we'll see a lot of familiar faces and names in here. And thankfully, some new names and new faces. I love everybody to join and be a part of this. And I would love for people to want to engage on a deeper level. But yeah, we've tried, my wife and I were talking about this at dinner tonight. We're like, we've tried everything. We've tried um, everything you could think of. 
everything you're supposed to do for channel growth. And the channel is growing. The channel is growing. We are getting, you know, hundreds of subscribers every month. We're getting, if not thousands, we're getting, you know, a lot of impressions out there. YouTube's sticking us in about through between three and four million uh, YouTube feeds a month. That means that when you're scrolling through your videos and YouTube, which collects an amazing amount of analytical data, you'd be surprised how much they know about us. And I say us because absolutely um, nothing that's like, you know, personal information, but they know what kind of device you're watching, when you're watching, where you're watching from, what you watched before that video, what you watched after that video, how long you watched in that video, um, what other kind of videos you like to do, and demographic data as well. So they're using all of this and they're saying, okay, so, uh, you know, whatever the, the metrics are, whatever the gates are that recordology fits into, and they go out there and find three to four million other people out there that meet that, that haven't necessarily discovered us yet and pepper in our videos into their page, into their uh, feed. And, you know, from there we get, you know, we get people that join us and we get the usual thing is people find us by searching record player or, you know, record player review, uh, affordable record players, uh, will uh, Crosley damage my vinyl. All of those types of things are kind of funneling people in. So we do have that growth. There are new folks out there. In fact, even right now, and I'll get cut up on comments. I'm notoriously bad at that. But um, there are new faces here. But the growth was like this on the channel. At first, five years ago, nothing. Very, very slow, very, very slow. Then we went whoosh. I was up at, I got from like 100 subscribers to 500. To, let's see. Let me do this. Let me see if I can chronologically do this. From oh, We've been here about five years. Let's just say five years. I would say from about year one to year two, we were zero or 50 subs to about 500. Then about three months later, we were at 1,000. Then about a month later, 2,000. Two weeks later, 3,000. So it's exponential. It's like starts off very slow, exponential, exponential, exponential. Then over the last, it, gosh, I would say, oh, shoot, probably the last two years, our growth is flattened out. It's like still growing. We're still going up, but it's kind of like this instead of like this. Meanwhile, other YouTube channels are coming along and going like this. And we've talked about it before. You know, I don't do a lot of rock and roll. Don't click off if I just said that. And you're like, oh my gosh, this guy doesn't like rock. I do have some rock. In fact, we'll probably have some rock here. But it's not the focus like, you know, channel 33 RPM. It's not like a rock vinyl station. Most people are into vinyl like rock. Not everybody, thankfully, uh, myself included. But a lot of people like vinyl also like rock. It just happens to be the case. Also, a lot of people want to focus on high-end equipment, and this channel is designed to be about entry-level equipment. So I've taken this piece of the pie and shrunk it um, like this. So my potential perhaps is gated to you know the boundaries that are not boundaries, but the parameters that I've set forth on the channel. Hopefully that's not always the case, but anyway, so we're changing it up. We're trying some new things. That's all that to say that. Okay. One thing is I need to talk less and that's specifically on the, on the other videos. I'm trying so hard, especially to point the camera. Like I was really bad. Am really bad. This last show, I didn't do an intro, but I pointed the camera at the box and did an intro. You know what I mean? Like I need to get out of the habit of pointing a camera and talking. I need to do more showing less telling. You know what I mean? Those are goals for myself that I think will translate into better content. Because if I'm watching a YouTube show, I want to see stuff. There's a visual medium here, you know? I don't want to hear somebody talking for the most part. I want to see things augmented with minimal amount of talking, more showing, less telling. You know what I mean? That's kind of what I'm going for. Okay. Anyway, that's why you haven't heard from me in a while. I did take a week off. So uh, once we made the changes, we uh, closed out the nation. We redid the intro. Uh, we made another, some other tweaks and uh, changes to the station or the channel. And uh, then I took a week off, which um, was twofold. It was, on one hand, wonderful. <laughs> because it's so much work. You guys, people don't, unless you do YouTube, you don't realize. It seems so easy, but there's a lot that goes into it. A lot of stuff behind the camera is, you know, like management, account management, stuff like that. Um, so it was a nice break. But on the other hand, it was kind of like, man, you know, I felt this feeling like I need to get back. I need to do stuff. So it was really good to do that recent video. 
seems to be pretty successful. Um, the good news is in this hallway right behind this door, I have a hefty stack of merchandise that is ready. We accumulated a lot in the last two weeks. So a lot of product reviews, record player reviews, other equipment reviews coming your way. So be on the lookout for that. And again, I'm not sure of the cadence of it. One or two shows a week. I'm not sure what you guys want. I don't want to overload you with content, make it feel burdensome, burden, burdensome, that there's so much you can't get around to watching it because that's annoying too. Jason Croft says, good day, sir. I bought a cassette deck, Technics RSM10 as my last deck broke. Well, that should be a good one. Tell me about it. I'm not familiar with the RSM10. Sounds good. I actually just got a piece of equipment underneath this turntable. That's why you guys can see the uh, RT85. Usually it's down here. But I got a new CD player, new to me CD player. So I, I, be, I became a huge fan of the Yamaha Natural Sound products. And from the 90s, if you guys have ever seen anything Yamaha that says natural sound, which it pretty much all does, get it because it is tuned again. Well, it's tuned for classical music. I listen to some classical, but I listen to a lot of non-metal music. I do listen to some rock, but not all. Uh, that being said, it does a fantastic job of getting you a very warm, rich, natural tone. And I had a chance to pick up a Yamaha natural sound CD player. Thrift stores have a half off day. Normally 24, got it for whatever half toy for is, 12 bucks or something. And uh, unfortunately it did need a little bit of work, but I got it up and working and that has been filmed and will be a short and a TikTok uh, shortly. By the way, I did put up a little uh, teaser on TikTok tonight saying I was going live on YouTube. If you are here because of the TikTok video, let me know down in the comments, please. Jody Smith, welcome in. Sorry, I'm so far behind on comments. Robert says, I always enjoy your YouTube videos. Thank you, Robert. I really appreciate that. From Rigby, Idaho. Awesome. It's in Idaho just a couple years ago. Jason Croft says, would love to see your review. Skit? Skit? Or the thing that everybody probably calls it. Audio phono stage. Can you reach out to them? I don't know if I have, but I would like to. Definitely on the list if we haven't done it already. King of the Dots. I'm looking at Ram. Born in the USA, Caddyshack. Do you want a party by KC in the Sunshine Band and Mirage by Fleetwood Mac? I love an artistic display. Welcome in album art. Awesome. Very cool. Robert says, sounds good. Gaming Otaku. Hi from Northeast Texas. All right. Welcome. I love, love, love some Texas. I've been to Texas many a time, and I will be back in Texas many a more time. Uh, da, 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 da. Jason says, Patreon takes a lower cut. And see, Jason, it was thanks for the tip, by the way. It wasn't the cut. It wasn't the cut. It's not even the financial aspect. We were earning revenue on it, which, you know, is an aspect of, of things, but it's not everything. The biggest thing is engagement. You know, if you're only grabbing a small portion of your audience – you're thankful for who I've, I learned a long time from a mentor of mine, uh, Lou Mangello, who does a WDW radio podcast and a bunch of other content. He's an author and everything. If you love Disney stuff, check out Lou Mangello. Um, but one thing that he told me, actually, he was one of the people that mentored me prior to starting this channel was never focus on the audience you don't have. Only focus on the audience you do have. And that's all that matters, regardless of the size. So if you've got five people, be blessed that you have five people. If you have 100,000, be blessed that you have 100,000. Don't worry about a million. You know what I mean? And that's the way I've always looked at it. That being said, when you are doing a show, there's an investment of time and money and effort. And in doing that, if the payoff in terms of watch time and views and engagement is low, then maybe you want to reinvest that on a program that everybody wants to watch. You know what I mean? Because the cost, the, the, the finances can be recouped. You know, we earn revenues from uh, we earn revenues from qualifying purchases through Amazon. We earn through ad revenue, and you know, it's not so much a revenue replacement thing when it comes to uh, the membership program. It's engagement. You know, how do we turn a small number of views into a large number so that people are engaged, they're active, 
YouTube's recognizing that and saying, oh, wow, people are really watching this recordology stuff. We should serve it up to five or six million people next month instead of the usual three to four million. Just some behind the scenes stuff here. I appreciate any tips, feedback, requests that you guys have. Absolutely. Robert, welcome in. I love this. You guys are chatting with your, with each other. This is great. Jody Smith says, I I agree. Recent all-in-one record players you should you recently reviewed. I think I just think they should either put a dial face for the radio so you can see what you're tuning into or a slightly better cartridge. I agree. And it's a question, Jody, specifically about the cartridge that I've asked these companies. Uh, when we were at CES a couple of years ago, I said, why don't you guys just put it? This is before there was a lot of magnetic cartridges and portables. I was like, why don't you guys just put a magnetic cartridge? So many people are complaining because of the stupid ceramic. Nobody likes it. And they said to it, they said to me, us, my wife was there too. They said, the reason why is because when you see a suitcase player and an all-in-one aren't really designed for somebody who's out there researching record players, who's a you know an aficionado, who's an expert, who's a returning enthusiast, they're designed for you know, the person who's never had a record player or hasn't in decades and is interested in the novelty of it. You know what I mean? Like they're like, oh, record players. I want to try that. I want to see what that's about. And that's too full because there's a good aspect to that and a bad aspect. The good aspect is that it brings people into the hobby and they move on to bigger and better things. That just is the way it is. A lot of people say I started a suitcase player and now I'm rocking a 1200 from Technics. Um, the other thing is negative is that people come in and say, oh, I got a suitcase player. This sounds terrible. Vinyl sounds terrible. I hate vinyl. And then they leave. So that is the one argument that the audiophiles have that I acquiesce to. And I say, yes, that is a valid argument. Um, that being said, the reason why they don't put a magnetic in those ultra entry level stuff is because the people that are buying it don't care. They don't care yet. They will get to the point where they do care. And that puts them in the market for mid-range equipment. So it begins the ecosystem. It begins the... Uh, the ecosystem. And vinyl is interesting. I would not say it has planned obsolescence like uh, mobile phones do. Like Apple iPhones, iPads, all of Apple equipment and other companies as well, but especially Apple, they their whole model relies on planned obsolescence, meaning that they know they decide when a product is new, when it's obsolete. It's not because it becomes obsolete. In fact, most obsolete iPhones are still top performers. You know what I mean? But guess what? An iPhone 7 is now obsolete. Even though, you know, it's not an obsolete product, Apple says it's obsolete and you must now upgrade. And so how do they how do they control that? One, through the marketing. I'm doing a lot of one and two. Sorry about that. They do it through marketing. It's cool to have the 12. Oh, it's cool to have the 13. Oh, it's cool to have an iPhone 498. Uh, and then the other thing is, their software uh, is not compatible any longer than they want it to. So guess what? You have an iPhone 5 now. It's a fine piece of hardware. Again, not really obsolete, but it you can't upgrade the iOS on it anymore. And pretty soon the apps aren't going to work on it. And pretty soon you're stuck with an ancient piece of equipment that could probably make phone calls, maybe browse the internet, maybe connect to email, but you're not going to be able to get the latest apps and things for it. So that's how they do it. Planned obsolescence. I don't think vinyl is the same way. Uh, certainly, it's stuff like this, this early 80s Technics, not designed to ever um, be obsolete. You know, even, you know, the next model, they weren't thinking, oh, everybody's going to get rid of their SLB5s and, you know, upgrade to the next greatest thing. It's just, here's our latest offer. Here's the newest thing that we offer. And the feature set is probably pretty identical. If you compare this to earlier iterations of this, it's pretty much identical. Uh, where things are just different than that now. However, when it comes to people getting into vinyl, the very first time buyers don't care about magnetic cartridges because they don't know about magnetic versus ceramic. And yes, it is cheaper. So again, you, oh, that's just terrible. These companies, they're just money laundering, not money laundering. They're money grabbing. They're just trying to make money. Well, yes, they're businesses. People think that's evil. How dare you be profitable? But at the same time, you got to do it. And you got to do it honorably. You got to do it with integrity. Um, but the thing about it is, is you could shave off five, 10 bucks with, you know, different aspects of building the product. You're going to, you're going to dragnet 
more people with a $39 turntable and get them into this hobby, which will mean they buy more down the road than you will with a $69. You know what I mean? Like it just makes it cheaper. More people are interested. One thing I wondered is if I made the Vinyl Nation a buck 99, would more people join than if it was when well, it was 499, I think, or 399. I'm always curious. What would what would people do? Would they be interested or not? Kyle, welcome in. Greg, welcome in, my friend. Welcome to see. Glad to see you there. Glad to see everybody there. Craig says, me and my cousin are going to swap me. Oh, that's cool. That'll be fun. Oh, yeah, you're up in Milwaukee. That's awesome. Kyle, welcome. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Old radios. Geez, took you long enough. Usually you're like one of the first three people, man. You're slacking. You are slacking. <laughs> I bought an Electra Home suitcase model from 2016 at Garage Sale. How is it? I don't think I've ever reviewed one of their suitcase models. They really don't like me saying that they are the same company as Fulons. Electra Home. I hate that. I've been told multiple. Stop saying that. They're separate brands. I'm like, they're both the same company. I know, but we don't like to advertise the fact. It's public information. Um, were you able to get the... You must be asking somebody else because a Quandale Ingle record. Jay, I'm not sure what that is. Old Radio says, I haven't bought any records in a while. Yeah, because you were buying like cameras a lot, weren't you? Robert says, oh, I know... How you guys feel every time when you have to edit your videos? There, yeah, it's a lot of work. Excuse me, it's fun though. I mean, I do enjoy it, but sometimes it's exhausting. And then the payoff for me is, you know, uploading it and then watching those views come in because it's fun. It's like, yeah, people are watching, they like it, they're interested, they're engaging, they're commenting. The worst thing is you do you go through all that work and then like nobody's watching. <laughs> when I say nobody, relatively nobody. You know what I mean? But how to take it to the next level. There are 24 people on this live stream right now. That should be, in my opinion, more like 150 based on the number of subscribers we have. And the whole thing is, I'm not going to say it's a problem, but the dynamic that we have on this channel is you have the audience of this size, then you have people that are actively engaged of this size. And so the percentages always run low. It's the same reason why we had low turnout for the membership program or vlogmas when we've done vlogmas in the past, because, you know, we're doing a video about a record player review. You get, you know, a thousand hits the first day, which it's a pretty small YouTube channel. It really is. That's not a, I mean, you look at like tech Moan and he's got a, he's got a thousand in the first 30 seconds, but you know, even for our own metrics, we're, that's a that's a good that's a good performance. If we can hit a thousand within the first twelve hours, that's doing pretty good. Do vlogmas, same effort, probably more effort actually, and one hundred fifty views, one hundred and fifty, not thousand, one hundred fifty. And it's like that's frustrating. You know what I mean? Because it's like there's some people that are like, yeah, this is fun. And I think to myself, if Techmoan did vlogmas, would I watch? Yeah. If he did a live, would I watch? Yeah. And for some reason, that doesn't translate with the people that aren't in this room, you know, for a lot of them. And a lot of, a lot of people, it's uh, time of day, you know, in the UK right now. This is not it. For those of you in the UK watching live, thank you. I know this is like not a convenient time. I think it's uh, uh, 1.15 a.m. Uh, in the UK right now. So I get that. And people that are in Europe even further back, it's gonna be later and later. So, or earlier and earlier? No, it'll be later and later. So I appreciate that, but it's it's always a puzzle to me. It's always a puzzle. Like, how do we adjust it? Like, how do we rotate? Do we change? How do we, you know, trying to get the most headroom? Because it's kind of a bittersweet thing when I get the comment, which I do every once in a while, like, I wish I would have heard about you way sooner. And I'm like, yeah, me too. How can I, how can I make that happen more? Or you should have way more subs than you do. I'm like, that would be awesome. How do we do that? Let me know. You know what I mean? And always I do want to know. If you guys can tell me anything like do less of this, more of that, please do so. Please do so. After five years of doing this, it is, I've learned a lot, but I probably have even more to learn. I still very much feel like a newbie in that regard. 
get caught up on comments. I'm always so bad on comments, you guys. I'm so sorry. I read each and every one of them. I just get on a tangent. I think the core problem is I just talk too much. That's probably what it comes down to. Just bought Led Zeppelin 3 today, Robert says. Dude, that's a good album. I had that on CD back in the 90s. That is a good album. Oh, hello. Wow, this thing just... Wow, well, even for the behind than usual. Old Radio says, I bought a 1014 model Canon Super 8 camera. I knew you were selling the cameras. I knew it. I knew given time, there would be a camera. That's awesome, dude. You ever seen that TikTok channel, The Expired Film Club, something like that? My friend Fardemark, uh, who's a, another YouTuber, who doesn't usually join our lives, but he... Uh, he, does, he shoots expired film on, on vintage cameras, and it's cool. It's interesting. It's, I didn't think you could you know develop expired film, but I guess that's a thing. Anyway, check that out if you haven't done so. Expired Film Club. Every, and they, the way they do the videos are really, really fun. Robert says, grew up in the 80s, as did I, Robert, as did I. We had an 80s store here a couple of years ago. I did a video. They had some pocket rockers in there. I want, I've never had pocket rockers. My wife had pocket rockers when she was a kid. I always wanted the white one. I never had any pocket rockers. They had them there, but they wanted like 75 bucks each. I'm like, it's just way out of the way. But they had trading cards and stuff from all different, like every TV show, you know, Alf and the All in the Family, all these, I guess that'd be more 70s, but all these like TV show trading cards, Hulk Hogan, uh, all kinds of 80s stuff. It was so cool. It was so cool. I did a video, I think a long time ago with that. In fact, I think I featured the, if you dig, in our videos, you can see I did a video with the uh, showing the pocket rockers. It's the only appearance pocket rockers have made yet on Recordology. I would love to do a full review. Yes, I know. Techmon's done it. Techmon's done it all. Okay. We got some cassettes a couple of weeks ago, says Old Radios. I, pick, I picked up some tapes recently, too. Picked up this really cool um, Peggy Lee tape. This is this is one volume, tape one of three from a um, Reader's Digest set. That was really cool. I've started to collect uh, Peggy Lee over the last few months. She's got way more music out, sadly, because she lived longer. That's not sad that she lived longer. Let me rephrase that. More than Patsy Cline because she lived longer. It's sad that Patsy Cline didn't live as long. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, because of that, Peggy Lee has a lot more music. And because of that, it'd be a lot harder to put to together a collection of all the albums. That being said, I've been trying to pick those up from time to time. Uh, I saw that one. Also, I got a CD. Uh, CD for us recently. Oh, yeah. Something else I've been doing recently. Uh, okay. Stay tuned for a little bit into the show. I'm going to give you an update. I got a couple boxes here. Something else I've been doing lately, and I want to share it with you. The people that now are really about to slap their hand on their forehead right now. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Kyle got a new record album, Kane Brown. That's awesome. What kind of music? Mark says, I've got a four CD. I got a four CD set of big bands still sealed, such as Glenn Miller. Love me some Glenn Miller. Benny Goodman. Yes. Artie Shot, et cetera, et cetera. Do you have Messenger or Instagram so we can private message? And you are voting for two to three videos daily. Wow, that Mark. <laughs> two to three videos daily. That's the territory of a full-time YouTuber, of which I am not yet. Two to three daily. Man, two to three daily? Weekly. You probably meant weekly, right? Um, very generous. I oh, Please reach out to me on, I don't have uh, Messenger, Instagram. Wait, we have Instagram. Recordology has Instagram, but I don't, I'm really bad about getting the private messages on there because our involvement on Instagram is a lot lower than it is anywhere else. Best way to get all of me is recordology1938 at gmail.com. I'll put it in the comments. Recordology1938 at gmail.com. This is also in our uh, about tab. It's in our description tabs. Recordology1938 at gmail.com. I spell that right. Uh, if you want to get a hold of me, that's the quickest and most efficient way to do so. Greg says, join me and my cousin are going. Yeah, that's awesome, dude. Now, tell me what you pick up from that. I'd love to find out. People who want to get their feet wet. Okay. 
I don't know what you're talking about. It's how I started to. Oh, you're just talking about, okay, sorry, the delayed comment thing. We're talking about the entry-level equipment. Yes, sorry. That's what's bad about, I mean, you're talking about something I was talking about 10 minutes ago because you put that comment in there 10 minutes ago, and I am just now reading it. So I apologize. I'm behind again. Greg, uh, Robert, I still have all my CDs since 1990. Nice. And still buying CDs. So am I. Records. Still have them all. And also mom took all the records to a pawn shop. So I'm so mad. On my dad's mom. Oh man, that sucks. I'm sorry to hear that. Are they 78s? The records are going to be looking at here in a minute. No, they're actually 45s. John Egan, welcome in. Mark, maybe Farta Mark, he can help me for sure. I have record LP is a way to put them in CD format. Yeah, there's different ways. Some equipment, a lot of the other ones will do that. Uh, War Radio says these old man audio files act like they never started. I know, and they did with the crystal. Yeah, crystal cartridges that were even harsher. Absolutely. Yep, yep, yep. Robert says, I got a ceramic turntable about a year and a half ago, and I started vinyl, and then my wife bought me an LP2. Nice. I couldn't believe how great it sounds. Yeah, absolutely. And by the way, you guys haven't seen it yet, our latest video. Uh, we reviewed a system with a ceramic that was good. It was a good, it's a new Crosley Aria, I think is what it's called. And holding on to it for a possible giveaway, maybe around Christmas time. So stay tuned. We've given away so many record players and records on this station. On this channel, that might be another one, but it is in storage right now. But a surprisingly good performer with ceramic cartridge. A ceramic cartridge isn't necessarily bad. There are certain factors that have led historically ceramics to perform poorly in all ones and suitcases over the last 10 years or so, which has given the whole technology a bad name when it's really not that bad jerry says hello just got finished putting up groceries i'm here now welcome in jerry jerry says oh he's talking to old radios there one of the one two wonder suitcase players yep with the crystal card you mentioned tech moan he thought he had gotten a shelf system with a tape deck with full logic controls and he found a hidden door yeah, I love logic controls too. I know, right? Let's hide the bad old technology behind a little trap door. Got any new 78s? I have it. My last 78s were actually given by a viewer. He was sending me these really crazy cool 78s, like some stuff like from Hong Kong with non-English characters on it. And um, I got a Glenn Miller bootleg on Biltmore Records. And it was a really cool 70. My 78 collection is huge but it's potent in that it's really interesting stuff. Mike says, hello from Fort Collins. Hello. That's awesome. I love it when I hear from locals. That's really cool. Welcome in. Yeah, there's an the email there. Robert says, I used to have some of those stickers, books, and baseball, baseball, basketball cards. Somebody took all of my cards. That's how they got all wet and ruined. Oh, terrible. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I got the Bucky shirt here. All my Texas and Florida peeps. Recognize the uh, Bucky's merch. By the way, Fort Collins, you're not going to be too far from uh, uh, up north here. They're going to be building a, a Bucky's up in uh, Johnstown. So that'll be interesting. Okay. Got caught up in comments. Keep them coming. I'm going to try and stay on top of them better than I usually do. Before we get to the records, which we're about to, I promise, 38 minutes in, you've waited long enough. I promise I'm going to keep this short, but I've started collecting baseball cards again. And um, like I needed a new collection like i needed a new hole in the head but i actually started collecting baseball so uh here's a top series two hanger box and a don rust the interesting thing is don rust doesn't have a license i had collected by the way back in the 90s and apparently everybody collected back in the 90s like half of kids collected baseball cards now it's like half of one percent like it's so minimal and the market is really adults more so than kids and i still have my baseball card collection somewhere i have some like kind of choice pieces that are not boxed and buried, but um, most of my stuff is, is buried. So I started collecting baseball cards again about a month ago. Just nothing that crazy. I mean, just, you know, what if I could find a box at Walmart, which is hard to do, Target, et cetera. And um, I learned a lot. Apparently, it, back in the 90s, every company sold baseball cards. Now there's two. Tops, and they're the only ones that have the license with MLB. So they're the only ones that have logos on the shirts. And Don Russ, which is now owned by this company called Panini. And they go for crazy money. Like these hanger boxes are like eight, nine bucks. This, and you'll see this has 67 cards. This has 50 cards. 
But these are the two companies pretty much that make trading cards now. Isn't that crazy? And that, it just blows my mind. And so Panini doesn't have the license. So you'll see Wander Franco there who plays for the Tampa Bay Rays has no logo on his shirt or helmet because they only have a license with the MLB Players Association, not the MLB. So they can only use the likeness and the name of the baseball player. Whereas Topps has a license, as they proudly display, with MLB and the MLB Players Association. So they can use the likeness, the name, the logos, everything. And there's no other companies. You know, there's not, I mean, if they are, there are subsidiaries of these, like Bowman is now Topps. Um, you know, Panini owns whatever Topps doesn't. It's crazy. And there's crazy, some boxes of trading cards are going for thousands of dollars. A pack, of just a pack of cards usually now comes with like three cards and it'll cost you eight bucks. Like it's crazy. I was I was at a shop recently and they're like, yeah, this industry has priced all kids out of the market. Now it's just a bunch of, you know, middle-aged people like me trying to recapture their youth. But, and I don't have a huge collection. I'm not going over thousands. My wife is like, please don't let them go for the thousand. Don't have as many cards as you have records. I'm not collecting on quantity. I just wanted some. I just wanted some. I have, you know, all of the cards that I bought this year could fit in a box about this long. And they're not super expensive. They're not graded. I do have a few relics that I picked up at killer prices, but I just haven't fun. I'm listening to the games on the radio. I haven't gone to a game yet, but I'm just getting into it a little bit. It's fun. You know, I'm having fun doing that. Um, so I thought I would share that with you. And next we're going to look at records. Yeah. So I guess during COVID, everybody, oops, during the pandemic, oh, during the uh, situation that we all just went through, probably does, I don't think it matters as much anymore. But there was a while where you weren't supposed to say that on, on YouTube. Um, but they, uh, uh, everybody started collecting baseball cards again. Uh, mostly there are people that are doing it as an investment and drove the prices high, and now they've kind of skyrocketed. That being said, they're still expensive. The nice price sticker on some records. Yes, I love that. UTP 216, how can I, how can you tell if you have ceramic, how many people I lose over the baseball thing? Wow, nobody dropped, or only a couple, or gained one. Welcome into the new person. Uh, how can you tell if you have a ceramic or magnetic? I'm using an Audio-Technica turntable Bluetooth. Yeah, if it's Audio-Technica, it's going to be magnetic. The easiest giveaway is a, is a ceramic cartridge or the ones with the red on the bottom like that. Those are the, That's a common ceramic. However, there are some older magnetics that have red. So it's not 100%, but it's like 99. That's how you can tell. If you've got a white tip Audio Technica cartridge. Okay, yeah, yeah. If your turntable has this guy on it, the 3600, that's a magnetic. This is a great magnetic, and it's an entry level magnetic. You can buy one of those brand new for like 12 bucks, and it's great. Okay. By the way, I don't think Mrs. Recordology is watching right now. So let me tell you guys this. She is trying to start a collection of pins, like little with a pin, you know, like a little, how do you say it? <laughs> Buttons, not a button, like a button with a pin on the back, like little circular things. They have my record shops, just like cute little pins. She's collecting this. So if you guys want to make her day, Mail us some of those at the P.O. box, dude. That would She would love that. She would truly appreciate it. She would truly appreciate that. I would love to see um, viewers send her stuff. That would be cool. I always get spoiled with stuff. You guys always send me stuff. Um, but if you guys send her some of those buttons with the pin, the back, pin back buttons um, for her collection. She's like 20. Uh, but that would that would be really appreciated. Um, da -da 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 -da. Trevor's flat, round, and spun vinyl community. I love that. For my recent wedding anniversary, my wife got me a Fluence RT81, nice turntable, a pair of Edifer powered speakers. Can't go wrong. You can't believe how much of a sound upgrade that, yes, from the LP60. Oh, that's a, absolutely. You gave up the automatic functionality though, but that you're in a uh, higher level. That's a, the RT80 series sounds amazing. I love my 85. I had the 80 and then that was amazing. And then the 85, it's amazing how similar their bottom end is from their top end. It's like if you can only afford the eight RT80, it's still a fantastic turntable. It's not that much different than this guy. There's a couple small differences. But you could be looking at both and be like, are these different? Okay, now I see a couple small differences. 
but they're not largely vastly different. I have some baseball cards from the 2000s, says Old Radios. It's awesome. I think everybody's got some. Kyle says, I got to see the Turtles happy together. Tour. Oh, that's so cool. I saw the Turtles. We were at some concert, gosh, here in Denver, probably 10 years ago. And it was, they had like four or five bands and the Turtles were one. And we got to hear Happy Together in person. Oh, that was so cool, dude. That's a good song. You have my wife on live chat. Yeah, she's been on our lives before. I'd love to get her on more. That's really cool. I'd love to hear you guys say that. Mark says, my grandma and grandpa has tons of the little 78s. Oh, those are cool. I love those. I've got a couple of those. On the other side, my family farm Edison player from 1923. Oh, that's so cool. Does the mold affect the sound over time? I'm not sure. It does on wax, I would think, but I don't know about that. Holy cow, super chat. Doo, doo, doo. Super chat has come in. I need a cool sound when a super chat. Hey, Google, play an explosion sound. This is an explosion. Okay. There we go. Hey, Google, volume eight. Hey, Google, play an explosion sound. This is an explosion. Oh, it's going to be loud. All right. Okay, cool. <laughs> Thank you, Christopher Grimm, third channel. Send a $10 super chat. You are awesome. Thank you so much. Straight to the front of the line. Comments getting answered now. I just got me Soundgarden's album, Super Unknown on Vinyl, for Thursday. I used to listen to Soundgarden back in the day. It's a good band. For 40 bucks, new and sealed for a rare vinyl. It's a 20th anniversary, 2014 edition. It's on 200 gram, 33 RPM, and sounds great. That's awesome. Is it colored vinyl? That is so cool. That is so cool. Thank you for sharing, and thank you for the super chat. I always blows my mind. I'm like, oh, yeah, super chats. That's a thing. That's a surprise. You guys are crazy. Thank you so much. All right. Robert says, I saw some in a box around 25 on Amazon. Yeah, there's all, and then you get boxes of packs, and then the boxes of the actual cards can get expensive. I saw this thing called a uh, what was it called? Oh man, it was a, it was by Panini, and there were $1,200 a box, and it's like a big wooden cigar box, and you open it up, and then there's like a small box inside. <laughs> Never have anything like this. And there's 10 cards in this little box inside the big box, and every one of them was an autograph, a relic, or something. Super expensive. I was like, what? Christopher Grimm, third channel, says, I have a lot of vinyl, too. A lot of REM. That's cool. Well, welcome in. If you're new here, I just want to say thank you, Christopher, for joining us here. Definitely hit subscribe. I'm so glad you're here. For 200 cards, 25 bucks. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark, are those Edison Diamond Discs? I have a few of those as well. Button pin. Thank you, Robert. Button pins. If you've got them, send them, and my wife will be very grateful. We might even be able to get her on the channel just to say thank you to you guys. Next time you should, yeah, absolutely. Flo and Eddie, Volman and Kalen. <laughs> what you guys are talking about, man? Yeah, we all know me too. Yeah, she's been on before. We need to get her on again. I got that on cassette. No, it's black. Okay, Chris, first of all, it is black. That's cool. Still cool. Rip, Chris Cornell. Yep, agreed. That's sad. Uh, got off eBay. He subbed. Thank you very much. You should have your money. Yep, I agree, Greg. Thank you very much. Mark, Edison player from 1923. Needs new needle. Maybe Farter Mark can help with that. You know, I've told him that he should do He should do more. Uh, yeah, so do I have that? Dead? I think I have custom diamond disc back here. Do you want? No, that's not a diamond disc. He actually has made some custom diamond discs, uh, like vi like not vinyl, they're resin molded. Anyway, all right, I got caught up. Time to go through some vinyl, finally, 49 minutes in. So these are random records from the Recordology Vault. I decided to grab 7-inch records because they're easier to display. This is a random assortment. So first thing we have here is Bill Sargent's Theatro Vision, Theatro Show presents James Whitmore as Harry S. Truman in Give Him Hell, Harry. And it is in this paper sleeve. 
This is really cool. Really, really cool. Part of the fun of vinyl is the packaging, right? Oh, cool. It's like a, okay, awesome. United Artists Records, 33 RPM, 7-inch disc. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Love this stuff. Maybe we'll listen to a couple of these here. I want to kind of get through as many as possible, as quick as possible. All right. This is a gift from a friend of the channel. And I want to see if he is still here. <laughs> this is a gift from one of you guys. Yeah, we got a lot of comments. You guys are awesome. From Tony. I don't know if I can't see if he's still here. Okay, Tony, if you're still here, uh, I just want to say thank you for this record. I'm going to take it out of the sleeve. He sent me a bunch of radio stuff. These white, apparently the white label variants typically indicate they're for radio station use. And somebody else told me, I know on the, uh, DECA did their radio promos on pink. And then they circle the A on side A so DJs can see quickly which is side A. Because if you look on side B, the A is not circled, but on side A it is. And apparently other labels did it differently. So um, this is Electra, and it's just a white label. So apparently that indicated that it was – okay, Tony, you're still here. Cool. So Carly, Simon, more and more. That's awesome. Trying to go up here. Thank you so much for that super chat. You guys are crazy. That always, I mean, you guys just blow my mind. I really appreciate it. Never expected, always appreciated. All right, I'm not going to make you watch me re repackaging something. All right, so that was awesome. I need to get this out of the danger zone so it doesn't get broken. Sorry, I had to look at my huge head. All right, here's another one from. Tony, Dr. Hook, only 16, another radio promo. Is there a note on here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at this. They show the cold lead in, three seconds, and the length of the song. And my dad was a radio DJ as well, and his records have notes on the labels too. But what's interesting is the stack of records that were from his radio station days that I inherited, my first records that I ever had, actually don't, have, they're not, none of them are promos. They were all commercial releases, as far as I could tell. Okay, next record we have here. Okay, this, I think, was on the show years and years ago. Years and years ago. Fax Record Company. Have you guys ever seen this? Fax Rec Wild Party Songs. So these are slightly suggestive party songs. Pretty tame by today's standards. We have Get Along Home, Cindy, Pinto Pony, Black Eyed Susie, Blinded by Turds. So uh, send for our free catalog. This must have been a, uh, a sampler record. We featured this on the show years ago. Years ago. Next up, we've got a flexi disc. This one was an audience or a, a viewer submission. It's a black flexi disc, one-sided, round, and uh, lives up to the flexi name. Absolutely. All time, 120 all time hits. And this is, I'm trying to think what language this is. You guys can see up there. I don't remember if this is Swedish. Well, look at the white balance trying to cycle through there. But that's a cool record. Literally just random records. <laughs> There's no rhyme or reason. This also speaks to how incredibly disorganized my 45s are. Okay, next up, this is a record from my dad's collection. In the radio station days. Here we go. Jerry Reed on a very 70s RCA Victor. Anytime you see that RCA logo right there, 1968 through the 70s. I'm not sure what year they, they got rid of that, but that is the 70s RCA logo. On one side, we have Swing in 69, which is instrumental. Jerry Reed, probably one of the most underrated guitar players of all time. And then uh, Georgia's, Georgia Sunshine on the other I'm not going into my Jerry Reed monologue, which I am known to do. All right, we have a picture disc next, but before that, 
We are getting back on track with comments. Uh, about 50, 45 records on vinyl, a lot of 33s. That's cool, Robert. Mark Volman and Ken Taylor from the Turtles. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Went into the flow All right, sorry. Hey, Ron, welcome in. Sorry I'm late on comments. Old Radio says, I have a, I have the VHS. I give him hell. Harry, that's awesome. Robert says, all my friends from Journeys call me a DJ. That's awesome. That's really cool. Old Radio says, Mark sent the – oh, wait. Yeah, 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 reproducer. Got it. Um, Kyle says, about a rare 45 Led Zeppelin. It's Atlantic, Al Misty Mountain, Hop on One Side, Black Dog. I love Black Dog. That's a good song. That's a good song. That is a good, good song. Absolutely. Our record, are some magazines still doing flexi discs? I didn't know that. Yeah, Jerry Reed is underrated in general. All right, next up is a picture disc viewer submission, seven inch picture disc, Barry Manilow, live in Britain. Isn't this cool? You don't see many seven inch, uh, did I say flexi disc? Picture disc. You don't see a lot of seven inch picture discs. I love Barry Manilow. My wife and I, when we were dating, went to a Barry Manilow concert, actually. Same place we saw the Turtles a few years ago. All right, next up from Dad's Collection, another 70s. Um, he was doing this in the 70s, so it makes sense. We got Elvis Presley, Where Did They Go, Lord. A very worn copy, as you can see on this side. And on this side, we've got Rags to Riches. You know something I've wondered before? Notice how the label is oriented in the up position on this side, but then I flip it around. It's totally, it's not 180. It's not even 90 degrees off. It's just randomly. Did they put the labels just kind of at random positions? I find that odd. All right, let's see here. This is another Victor, or an RCA Victor. I'm going to adjust this like, eh. Actually, let's see. Okay. This is a red RCA Victor Elvis. Again, look at the wearing. I like the red. I also like the orange. I like them all. This is super cool. I picked this up, I think, last year. It is one of my favorite music artists, Bing Crosby, on a gorgeous 60s Decca rainbow label. Got some Christmas music. Modeste Fidelis, I think is how you say it. And then on this side, Silent Night. And someone was kind enough to put a paper sticker right on the paper label. So that's cool. Okay. Oh, this is cool. This just happened to pop up. I didn't. I didn't grab this, but this is my very this record. Not just another copy of this. This actual physical copy that I hold in my hand is my first favorite record of all time. And as little Mister Recordology sat with his Fisher Price record player playing a stack of records that his dad gave him. This is the one that stuck out to me that I actually liked the music. Hope dad's not watching because I didn't like at the time as a kid, I didn't like a lot of what I didn't like. I didn't learn to appreciate Elvis and Jerry Reed yet, but this was very cool. This is my original copy. My dad's original copy handed down to me the same copy of Elvira by the Oak Ridge boys on an MCA label. And let me show you. I don't know if it'll come across how scratched up. Oh, it's not coming. It looks, it looks better on camera than in real life. It's a well-loved copy. And I remember I really learned to love that. Uh, again, rainbow, sort of this rainbow motif with DECA or later MCA as they became. Uh, awesome. I never, a woman like you on side B, never played that. Saw him in concert as a child. And I mean a young child. Fell asleep during the entire thing until Elvira came on. Boom, um, Papa, Mau, Mau. It's a masterwork of music. Absolutely. <laughs> do you know if any, do you know if a new needle for the Edison diamond disc player would cost expensive? So it wouldn't be the needle itself. So it's, it depends. So a di an Edison diamond disc requires a special diamond stylus. Um, and a special reproducer. So the actual reproducer and the uh, the stylus for it are unique. They're not like other gramophones or other phonographs. 
usually an old or an old um, can't talk phonograph with a completely uh, acoustic reproducer will have a mica reproducer and a steel needle. You can't play steel needles or use steel needles to play diamond discs because diamond discs, really thick records, isn't made of solid shellac. It's like a resin coating or sometimes a shellac coating over a wood wood flower core or paper core. Wood flower, right? Have you heard of that recently? So a wood flower core, I just grind the heck out of it. It would pulverize it. Some people say you can use a rollerball sapphire stylus, but yeah, I would say 100 or or so. Old radio's estimate is good, but make sure you're careful there. Diamond, maybe sapphire ball stylus. Don't use a steel needle. You can use a regular modern phonograph like this. That won't damage it because these track in grams versus ounces. I think we did a show recently where we did the tra- measure the tracking weight on my feet and Nola phonograph. 170 grams. <laughs> And people are worried that playing uh, 78 on, on on one of these, even if it's micro group, is going to damage it. I don't think so. I don't think I don't think a gram and a half of downforce is going to compete with 170 grams of downforce that you would have on a on the old phonographs. So, but yeah, the thing is with the Edisons because they're um, they are laterally modulated. The groove, well, no, wait, they're vertically modulated. The groove only goes up and down. They're hill and dale. The groove doesn't go left and right. Uh, you need to invert the polarity on the stylus, on the cartridge itself specifically, to hear it. But you can do that, even with a suitcase player. You invert the polarity on the cartridge, you can use your suitcase player to play an Edison Diamond Disc. I need to do a show on that. Greg says, yeah, we already read that. Um, Doing the talking machine forum. Yeah, Greg, definitely, definitely try to do that. We've done it in the past. Thank you for the comment. What's your first record you bought with your own money? That's a good question. You're, that's a great question. I might have it actually within arm's reach. Oh, no, it's a little further away. Um, it was a Wizard of Oz record. I bought it. And so get a load of this. Okay, let me watch the subscriber count go down as soon as I say this, or the viewer count. I um, was into vinyl as a child with my stack of 45s from my dad, et cetera, et cetera. We said about that. And I was, I, I, grew, I moved on to other things, tapes, CDs, MP3s, and left it in the dust until, drum roll please, about 2015, 2016. <laughs> so I, I haven't been back into this hobby very long. It was shortly thereafter that I started this channel in 2017. Because I've always said on this channel, I'm a beginner, I'm a newbie, as it were, and I'm not joking. So that proves it. So to answer your question, in about 2015, I got my first record player as an adult, and it was the Vibe $35 music system record player. No, was it? Yeah, two-speed. There was no queuing lever, but I was so excited and so thankful to have it. And it launched me on this journey. It was on early channel videos. You'll see the Vibe. I still have it. In fact... Is it down there still? No, I think I might have put that in storage. Anyway, um, and with that, I got a gift certificate to Barnes & Noble, and I went out and purchased with my own money. I hadn't thought about it before. That was my first record, not album or, you know, I bought a lot of tapes and CDs and things. But the first vinyl record I bought with my own money was Wizard of Oz soundtrack, not the Emerald version. I don't even, I was so, such an incredible newbie back then. I don't even know that there were editions. And I, I didn't know what 180 gram meant. I remember wondering, like, is that like the density? I thought it was, I thought 180 gram meant the density was like, it was a different density of vinyl, like a special material. I didn't realize that it was just a uh, heavier, thicker. That's funny. That's so, I think back about it. I've definitely made mistakes on this show too. Oh, I've said all kinds of stuff. I, I've said everything that I knew to be true at the time. And then as I've learned more, I've corrected myself. Probably the most egregious error I've ever made that's gotten the most comments, the most slaps on the wrist, <laughs> was when I said that you can't warp a 78. And people are like, oh, you can, absolutely. What are you talking about, you moron? I've never, I still have not ever seen a warp 78. Ever. And I've seen thousands and thousands. But I have seen videos of them and pictures of them. And I said, yes, you can do that. Vinyl will warp a lot. 
faster than uh, shellac. But uh, anyway, as I learn things, as I correct myself, I try to, you know, I've never been like, oh, I'm going to tell you everything because I've never been about knowing. I don't know everything. I don't even know much. <laughs> I'm just an enthusiast. I'm an enthusiast. I'm not an expert in most things in life. Baseball cards included. That's a great song, says Ron. Yeah, it is. Core Device says, so as a fan of your channel, I didn't know about a lot of things you discussed on the stream. Well, I'm glad it's been informative. Thank you for being there, by the way. I'm glad that you are here. Uh, when anybody says they're a fan, that's kind of weird to me because I'm just a regular guy. Um, and I am not worthy of having a fan, but I'm very grateful to have friends. Uh, and I consider you a friend. And I thank you for being there very, very much and for taking all of the time to watch our videos, watch our lives. It's just, it's humbling. It really, really is. Greg, thank you for all the emojis, dude. That's awesome. Not sure if it's a timing thing or other. It's a good, it's a good question. Robert's out. Sorry, sorry to see you go, Robert, but thank you for jumping in. I really appreciate it. Restored my B19 model last month, old radio says. Pathés are like that. I got pathés. I like that. Uh, I've got I've got one or two of those. I think mine are 80 RPM. I don't think I've got any of the 120 RPM ones. I just bought a Frankie Yankovic compilation from Cleveland Records called Songs in the Pole Game. That's cool. Old Radios has a few Warp 78s. Ron Schultz says, I still have my very first vinyl album that I bought when I was like 12 years old. Again, I still am. That's awesome. What is it? Pancake. Pan, pancake. Amite. Amite. That's cool. Metal 78 is from 19. It's from 19, like 20, like 1919. They sit in a hot caddy for decades and that's, oh, okay. 1919. That's cool. Only two years newer, younger than my 1917 Vita Nola. My oldest old radio says from 1901. My oldest record is from like 1904 or 1905, 1906, something like that. Ron Schultz says, it's a KTEL record called Southern Fried Rock. That's cool. Yeah, KTEL. I got some KTEL. The first records I ever bought were some 78s from the 1920s. It's awesome. Pancake and Animate combined. I like it. That's so cool. All right, moving on. Glenn Miller, Serenade in Blue. This is an EP. If you've never heard of an EP, it's basically a 45 that has smaller grooves so they can fit more music on. So you'll see a track band in the middle there. It's kind of hard to see, but see that? That's two songs instead of one. Still spins a 45, still perfectly compatible with any 45 RPM uh, record player, but they basically narrow the grooves so they can fit more music in is what it comes down to. And they would offer albums on dual 45 sets, EP sets, and they'd use EP as a sampler format and, just super cool. So I got quite a few of these mid-50s era. All right, this next one is 80s era record. Wang Chung, everybody have fun tonight. This is another classic. This takes me right back to my childhood. Everybody have fun tonight on Geffen Records. Sorry this isn't coming across that good. Super cool, though. A lot of these 80s records I inherited from my cousin, my late cousin. He was a doctor, and uh, he had a good collection of 80s vinyl. And I had the opportunity to go through and cherry pick out some titles at one point. All right. I've had this for probably about five years now. This is Duke Ellington, Uptown, and this is super cool. It's got Skin Deep, The Mooch. And this is this is, this has got to be an EP too, isn't it? No, it's not just a forty-five. I love the packaging. Now I've been a big band fan for twenty-five plus years. That's an interesting story for another day. And um, Duke Ellington, I had Duke Ellington music right from the start of my interest in big band. But it was sort of like I was a greatest hits fan is what I always say when I'm that level of fandom or I like it. Same thing with the Beatles. I love the Beatles, but I'm a greatest hits fan. I've got the number ones album and I'm fine. I maybe one or two. I got some A-tracks too. 
but I'm not like collecting every album. You know what I mean? And I was that way with Ellington as well. And then about two years ago, I started listening to some more of his music and I really picked up on the genius of, uh, of the Duke. Amazing stuff. Next up, back to the 80s we go. Los Lobos, La Bamba. Again, from my cousin's collection. A very 80s paper sleeve. Love these things. Really cool. I'm not going to pull out every record because I actually have got something I got to do here in about 30 minutes. So I want to get this wrapped up before then. Joe Bush, Bushkin, Bushkin, Night Rhapsody. Very evocative cover. I love the city at night. Very cool. Very, very cool. Uh, Walt Disney Presents Robin Hood. This is a book and record set. Typical Disney, uh, fully illustrated book here. That we Remember my parents used to be mad that Disney never gave artists credit to all of their artists, but it was sort of the Disney brand. You know what I mean? Like it's Walt Disney presents, not individual artists, but these are great. And by the time I was a child of the eighties, it was primarily book and tape sets, but still into the eighties, they were doing these book and record sets. Where is the record? You might ask. That's a great question. Is this it? No, I don't know where the right, wait, this might be it. I really need to organize these. Now that's Toby Tyler. Yeah, this is another Disneyland record. I like that cool green label. Yeah, and they probably have it somewhere, but usually you would stick the record in the back. Like there's a sleeve. The idea is you would stick the record in this sleeve. But as you can see, it's open on the bottom. So maybe it fell out. I don't know. Um, this is a – okay, cool. So this is neat record. So we've talked before about the RCA Victor uh, when they came out with the 45 format when it was competing with the LP format that Columbia had. RCA color-coded all of their records, their 45s, for the genre. And the most common one, I bet you if you went to your local antique store, you could probably find one, are the red uh, 45s for classical. They're, what you find most of these days are the red 45s from the classical genre. But there were other colors for other genres as well. Somewhere around here, I've got a dealer's magazine, an RCA dealer's magazine, that shows all the colors and I'm always looking for it in the live and I never think to grab it before we film, but every, every genre had a color. And this is one of the non red ones. This is, um, let's see, what would this be categorized as? Well, it's this color, as you can see, it's sort of, it looks more blue on camera. It's more like a sea green. Uh, and this appears to be some operatic music. So you would think that a Bolero, you would think that classical and opera would be the same color category but apparently they weren't. I've got maybe three different color variants. Yellow was for kids' records, and that held long after the other color coding went by the wayside. All right, the good, the bad, and the ugly needs a sleeve, so I'm going to hold on to that until I come across the sleeve. Um, here's a compact 33 living stereo. These are pretty fun to come across. It's a compact 33. For a while, RCA Victor's like, we can just make uh, a, a 33 RPM record as an album format and make them seven inches. And so they did it with a small hole. And these are cool. Didn't really take off. You'll come across these every once in a while too. Um, so here's a great example of one of those yellow kids records. This isn't from the original 78 uh, color coding system, but this is, this is a 50s era golden record that retained the association of yellow with being kids. Look how dirty those grooves are. This is after being spun clean, by the way, too. It's just grimy. It's well loved. I mean, some kid really enjoyed this, but Golden Records, this is not even a seven inch record either, by the way. This, for comparison's sake, this looks to be about a six inch record. So, really, really cool. Got it in a nice sleeve here. By the way, if you guys are interested in vinyl accessories, it's been a while since we did a vinyl accessory show. Sneak peek. I love to get sneak peeks, people that take time to jump on the lives. Um, we are doing a show about accessories coming up in the near future. So stay tuned for that. We've also got a lot of product reviews, like I said. Now, Disney, their kids' records might be yellow, but they might not be yellow. This was a Disney record we just looked at. But sometimes they had records for kids that weren't yellow and were red or kind of an orangish red, like this awesome record right here. Look at that, Mouseketeers record. 
You'll notice that says 78 RPM. 78 RPM stayed in favor as a format, as a speed for kids' records long after it had died off for the adult consumer. Um, so yeah, these 78s, this is like a vinylite material, which is similar to vinyl as we know it today, but it's basically a, a polyvinyl chloride of some sort, some sort of variant. Uh, but yeah, this is cool. Sort of, this is coming across pretty accurate, kind of an orangey red. Really cool. That's a seven inch record, by the way. This was a, I think some kind of, we did a show on this one. I forget how, this is a, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, this is cool stuff. I hope you guys are having fun with this. I love doing this stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this was a mail order. You had to mail away for it. And I think there was different versions. Get all four Musketeer records, record number one, two, three, and four. And this is record number one. It says right on the front. I said, I knew I said it, or I knew I saw it somewhere. And look what it says at the bottom of the label there. If I can figure out which way is up. Wheaties. So Wheaties cereal. Get your record today. So that's awesome. Love that stuff. I love that stuff. 78 RPM. These sound really, really good on the uh, um, classroom record player with the 78 stylus, the wide groove stylus. I'm always like amazed by the fidelity. You think you would think just like superficially looking at this, like, oh, that might sound like crap because it's a kid's record. It's a 78. It's old, et cetera, et cetera. If I play this for you on proper equipment with the proper needle, et cetera, you would be like, wow, the fidelity is amazing. It really, really is. Good grief. I cannot get this back in the thing. Come on. Go back in there. What is the holder? Come on. I didn't go to college for nothing. Maybe I did. All right. I'll finish that up later. Okay. Jumping forward to kind of my era, a lot less exciting, but interesting nonetheless. Uh, 80s era, we've got Frog and Toad, not to be confused with, um, I shouldn't have said that because now I can't think of it. It's not the Walt Disney Frog and Toad. It's it's the Scholastic Frog and Toad stories from the 80s. Scholastic records, some of the cheapest records. This thing is pretty much a flexi disc, even though it's not supposed to be. I mean, it's it's cheap. It's thin. It's, you could open envelopes with this. It's so sharp. Um, but yeah, stories on records. Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. That's what I was trying to say. Not Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. Different different frog and toad. Different toad. A little bit more wholesome than that. We'll think more wholesome than a Disney thing. Yeah, you'd be surprised. At it's pretty much frog and toad ride. It was pretty much about going to hell and uh, emerging from hell. Kind of dark for a Disney. <laughs> Literally, it was a dark, dark ride. All right. I'm going to pause for station identification and to check comments here. Oh, wow. We got a lot. Okay. Let me get caught up here. I'm glad you guys are chatting in the background here. Okay, wow, I got a lot to get caught. Okay, I'm gonna fly through these comments. Old radios has, and I'm just gonna say old because old radios takes too much time. <laughs> old says, I've got a giant KTEL collection. That's awesome. I have three EPs, says Pancake Emit. Can Pancake Cake Emit? Can't say that right. Old says, I've got. That was a good one. Tony says the first record album, first record purchase was cherished by the association. Pinky and Perky's Beat Party, Columbia, UK. Elvis, Loving You. That's a great song. Uh, giant soundtrack. Oh, the Giant Sound. That's a, yeah, Dimitri Tompkin. Yeah, that's that's classic. Hello, Sound Lab Studios. <coughs> I have number one on vinyl two. Talking about the Beatles. Cali Boy Gaming says, I'm thinking of buying a turntable to budget 150 bucks. Do I have any recommendations? I, I have a YouTube channel where we talk about that kind of stuff. 
Um, $150. If you want to go, assuming you want to go for sound quality over novelty, $150. You can go two ways. You can look online. You can look in thrift stores as something vintage and be prepared to buy a new belt for it. Definitely you could do that for 150 bucks if you're patient. Um, but watch our video. We've reviewed so many. That's our whole channel is about entry level stuff. So we've probably reviewed 2,000 turntables under 150 bucks. I used to say my go-to was the LP60, but now it's 200 bucks. It's like 179 minimum. So, and then even the U-turn orbit, they the $170 U-turn is now more. I'm trying to think of what. The Best Buy Insignia turntable is surprisingly good. Um, I, people have been getting deals on that lately. That's fantastic. Uh, same company makes the Target um, Heyday turntable, although I think they might have discontinued that because I haven't heard about that in a long time. That was a good one. Stay away from the Walmart on turntable. That was trash. $150. Bucks. That's a good question. 150 bucks. What do you guys think? What do you guys recommend? Digadoo is a great 78 by Ellington. Yeah, that's a good song. I have all the Beatles albums, several original UK monos. Ooh, that's cool. Awesome. Parlophone Beatles. Oh, wow. That's rare. Uh, iWorks. Why are we talking about I iWorks? He was one of uh, Walt Disney's artists. SoundLab Studios says he's got video on his channel of his collection. Jaden, welcome in. Welcome in. Welcome in. Love the green country 45s RCA has. I don't know if I – I think I might have one of the green ones. They're the highlight of my record collection. That's awesome. Jaden says, I have a red 45. That's not, probably classical if it's red. We were just talking about that. I have Alvin and the Chipmunks ripoff called Busy Beavers. That's funny. I think I have a Chipmunks Christmas record. I do have a Chipmunk. I think I have an album on the Chipmunks Christmas record. But it's a story. It's not like a music one. If you're a Zenith Twin 7 type players. Have a soft spot for colored vinyl. So do I. I love colored vinyl. I think it all should be. I know. 33 plus 45 is 78. I've noticed that before. Can somebody tell me why? Why? I don't get it. Like, why is that a thing? Like, what is the science behind that? Now, I my, here's my thought process. You're trying to get the vinyl slower so you can fit more music on a record. That's the marketing side. How slow can we play it and still have it be high enough fidelity that the, the, the you know greater population would be okay with that? But why did they, why do they why is it so perfectly add up to something that's weird? I've wondered that many many times. Jaden says I have Bobby Bobby Boris Picket Monster Mash Monster Mash okay. <laughs> thirty three RPM. Purple people are yep old records et cetera et cetera. A lot of record companies had gimmicky name for like vinyl, super vinyl, EMI, Styrix, yeah. And there, there was some variance in it, but yeah, you're right. And ours is a premium formulation, absolutely. The marketing has always been very heavy. You know, the way that records are designed, everything. And we've done shows on, on that stuff, like Dynaflex and, you know, the way a 45's hub is designed. Do I have any Halloween records in my collection? Yes, I do. We've got some spooky records. That'll be rearing their ugly heads here in the near season to come. Do I have Thriller? I don't have Thriller. The, the picture disc Thriller, I do not. I have Bad. Um, thriller is a great album. Obviously, timeless, classic, but um, I don't have I've had it in the day. Back in the day, I had it on tape as a kid. Jaden Good, I have that same vinyl. I'm a purple vinyl. Uh, it's a diamond disc player. Not sure the model. Not working condition. Some Christmas records. All those kids' records in stereo, usually not. Frog and Toad. Go to hell. <laughs> pretty much. It makes different. It's Frog and Toad. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, pretty much. Do you have any Kenny Rogers records? I don't, but I like Kenny Rogers. Love to have some Kenny Rogers. I you know, I'm thinking 
uh, early 80s, Kenny Rogers, a gambler, stuff he did with Dolly Parton. In fact, if I were to get an album, it would probably be The Gambler. I think it's the name of the album, right? Old Radio says, is the machine able... Okay, you're talking to this other person on there. Who's a female announcer who says Recordology in the video? That would be the lovely Mrs. Recordology, a.k.a. my wife. Mark H., Old Radios, it spins when cranked up. Uh, question for Recordology. Any Buck Owens? You know, I probably do have some Buck Owens. I probably do. In fact... I've even seen the Buck Owens Theater in Branson, Missouri. Sound Lab Studios somehow skinnered with the nine-minute Freebird on 45. Probably used the EP modulation would be my guess. My guess. Disney Haunted House record. I've got – I either have – yeah, I think I have that. I think I have that. I have to look. Paradise by the Dashboard, by the Dashboard Light, by Meatloaf. Court of Ice, I've gotten into the habit of buying estate sales, random records. Usually 78's classical, but finding it when you're trying to find it. Eh, that's cool. Pancake, welcome and thank you. Appreciate you being here. Trevor's Flat Round and Spun Vinyl Community. Have to bolt. Thank you so much, my friend. My second alarm will be awful here in eight hours. Oh, I'm sorry, man. Yeah, I better get going. And we're going to wrap it up here, too, in just a minute. Uh, I want to say thank you to everybody for being here. Do you have any Glenn Miller on VHS? I've got somewhere. I've got the Glenn Miller story, my favorite movie of all time. I've also got the two movies that Glenn Miller actually appeared in Sun Valley Serenade and Orchestra Wives somewhere. I uh, love both of those. I love all three of those. Ever listen to Steely Dan? Yes, I have. Um, I'll give you a copy of my Kenny Rogers cassette tape. Awesome, dude. That'd be great. Thank you so much. That's awesome. And as we finished up, a man of my word, I want to get through all these. Donny Osmond, Flexi Disc. Put a coin right there to stabilize it. Um, this, these are cool. These clear Flexi Discs. This is a Gibson guitar sample record. Look at the, uh, I don't know if you call that a Moray effect, but it's, uh, doesn't, it, it's, there's no actually a spiral. It's just a groove. But the clear Flexi Discs are always really cool to look at. Another kid's record here. This is uh, Dennis Day, who was, you know, from uh, Jack Benny fame. He was on the Jack Benny program on Cricket Records. Now, what I like about Cricket Records is the way the label looks. It's a very unique label. It's like a smaller label than a regular 45 around the uh, center hole there. I picked these up for a dollar a year or two ago. That's awesome. Uh, we've got a London Records EP here, Sambas. Now, what's interesting about this is these are not um, these are not regular sambas. These are Scottish sambas, which is really, really interesting. And on the back, advertising for all the other records. Yeah, you bought this record, whatever. We want you to buy more. <laughs> the record marketing folks are aggressive and brutal. Um, let's see. We've got uh, Sing Along with Ray, the Merry Mailman, Ray he Heatherton. And that's also a cricket record. We've got a Chet Atkins galloping guitar. Chet Atkins is fantastic. If you go down the Jerry Reed route, you're soon to go down the Chet Atkins route as well. On the beautiful red 70s, we've got more yellow 70s Elvis. We've got reprise records, Sinatra's label. In fact, this is a Sinatra record. Reprise records. Now, this record label had no studio, so he would still record at Columbia, or no, at Capitol, even though he had his own studio. We've got Atlantic Red Records, uh, Bette Midler, Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy. She sings all of those harmonizing parts on there, and then a lot of people recognize that. Peter Pan Records. Hey, if you're a child of the 80s, Peter Pan Records, you're very familiar with it. This is um, definitely a budget kind of entry compared to uh, Disney records. There's no book. It's just a sleeve. This is a record I have not shown on the channel yet, but it will at some point make a full appearance. This is a Russell Records demonstration disc. Different color label on each side. Not 100% sure why. We'll research and find out. Bill Haley. Now, you may think old Decca. So is this country? You know what? Bill Haley was a country and Western 
uh, performer before he switched to rock and roll. So uh, Taylor Swift is not the first one to go pop after uh, having been country. Uh, so yeah, or this is actually rock and roll, Bill Haley, though. Really cool stuff. Another colored record. Two more to go. Peter Pan records, an old one, a dark red, very thick 78 kids record. Peter Pan records, Mighty Mouse in Toyland. Yeah. One more record. Grant, wait. Yep. Final record. And it's just a sleeve because the record's missing. Elvis. On this side, Burning Love. It's a matter of time. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. RCA Victor. Ask for Elvis Big Album Now. For a while there, he had all these album titles that were kind of the same thing. It's like Elvis Now, Elvis Today, Elvis Tomorrow. Elvis. It's like Elvis does this. Elvis does that. They're trying to crank as many records as they could out of them, and they did. Okay. Um, dun, 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 dun. One quick sweep on comments, and I will say good evening to you all. Just watched the Buddy, Buddy Holly story and loved it. Is that the one with Busey in it? Pancake says, I'd like to see your wife. I would too, which is why I need to end this. Thank you so much for being there, guys. I caught you at the last minute. Love your stuff. Probably haven't been watching your videos in a while. Hey, what the heck? You promised, Jade? Is that a promise? Okay, please do. No, thank you. Seriously. Thank you. I appreciate it. London Records, same label as the Stones. Great show. Thanks for the live broadcast. Thank you for being there. Um, cricket label, yeah. What's my favorite record label? I've really been enjoying and learning about DECA and the whole history of that label. Elvis movie glossed over his movie career. Uh, I need I need to see that. Everybody keeps telling me I need to. I used to have a few cricket labels when I was a kid. And oh yeah, Elvis movie soundtracks are great. Listen, thank you for joining me tonight. We got to get ready for the week. If you're working this week, as am I, we got to uh, enjoy those precious few moments with our loved ones before we uh, hit the hay and start work again. So I want to say thank you so very very much for being there. I appreciate. Each and every one of you, thank you for the super chat. Um, and I just want to say thank you. So God bless each and every one of you. Have a wonderful night. And we will see you soon with a brand new episode of Recordology. See you guys later. Bye-bye.